Hello and welcome to the interesting podcast number nine. This week's episode is Johnny Volatile of Volatile Cosplay. Um, Johnny's awesome. That's why he's on my podcast. That seems to be a prerequisite to be a guest because everyone I've had on is super awesome. Uh, this was recorded back at Wizard World Fort Lauderdale and Johnny's a really, really cool guy because he's one of the people that is on the, like the forefront of spreading positivity. Um, he's just really, really cool. Cool dude. Great cosplays. Uh, I think you guys are really going to like this one. I say that every time. Probably because every time I start recording, I'm like, oh, what am I going to say? I don't know. I'll just record. And then when I record, I say the same thing. I don't know. It may also be because I record these intros at like around 6 a.m., and I work like midnight to six, so I get off of work and then I come home and I finish editing it and then I record a podcast intro that sounds really tired and I say the same things over. But it's a great episode. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Um, if you are listening to this, if you don't mind, leave a comment somewhere, be it on the SoundCloud page or my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, any of those. Uh, just let me know what you think. I'm trying to gauge the audience. Also... If there's anyone that you would like to hear on here, like as far as a guest, be it anyone, um, I would try my best to get them on. So, can't wait to hear those suggestions. Until then, please enjoy the interesting podcast with Jedi Brian, episode number nine with Johnny Volatile. Sean Aston just walked right by us. I'm looking at Samwise Gamgee's back. That dude helped destroy the Ring of Mordor. He looks fit. <laughs> That's so awesome. So oh, we're on. <laughs> we've seen Sean Flannery. Della Rocco. Della Rocco. Dean Kane. Dean Kane with Starbucks. The guy I forget his name. The uh, Ghostbuster. Oh, Ernie Huston. Ernie Huston. And now Sean Aston. We are sitting in the awesome. best place ever. <laughs> the entry. Right? Yes. <laughs> the back door. The back entry. Who says the back door is bad? And we have Austin Powers music playing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I felt like dancing. Right? Yeah. It's a beautiful day in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, beautiful day in Fort Lauderdale. Look at that. It's starting to pick up. But we're here to talk to you. Johnny Volatile? Is that how you say it? Volatile Whoa. Cosplay? Yeah? P people know my name now. People do know your name now. People I'm knew your name before. I'm slowly becoming popular. Right? Or was You're I always popular, popular in my book? Ooh. Yeah. Is this a uh, podcast or? Oh, it's a podcast. Or blind date? Who's, be who's sitting right? behind me? <laughs> I'll tell you at the end when the bell rings. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> she feels very thin. She needs to eat more. <laughs> I like the thick one. Oh, man. The well, burger, I mean. You know, I tried. So <laughs> <laughs> tough, man. Not much. Enjoying the third day of Wizard World, but my second day here. Sweet, sweet. My it, first day. It's 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 pretty good. I mean, it's their first year here. Yeah. Great turnout yesterday. Uh, it seems to be building up to be a better final day, which is always oh, yeah. good for everyone. Cosplayers, for sure. uh, vendors. Artists, celebrities, yeah. all that junk. Attendees and everybody, you know, because it's a whole... This is not just a, an event to have, you know, people make money. Obviously, people make money here, you know, artists and everything, but they have to. I mean, they have talents that, like Joker said one time, if you're good at something, never do it for free. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is what these guys do, and ladies that either are artists or cosplayers. For sure, which is very commendable. If you're going to do something like that, put it into the world and then put yourself out there and, yeah. you know, a vendor capacity is pretty cool. I mean, you're not no Van Gogh or, or Da Vinci that they did it basically for free and for fun. Right. And now their, their art is worth millions. 
make a few bucks, and then your artwork will eventually be famous later on in 100 years after we're all dead. Right. <laughs> but that's the, true, that's the true heart of an artist. You do it anyway. There goes my theme. Look at that. Metal Gear. Look at that. Metal Gear theme. I'm not even wearing my B. outfit today. That's what man. I'm talking about. They were playing Star Wars earlier. It sucks that we didn't have this prepared. I know. <laughs> it would have been awesome. Because today we're dressed up as Star Wars characters. Well, Correct. One more legit than the other. Well, that's not fair. This is my 501st uniform. So but still. I, w I wouldn't really constitute this as a cosplay. My Legion stuff, I don't, I don't consider oh. cosplays. He's the real deal. They are. They, they are the real deal. He's one of the people that executed Order 66. Just yeah. remember that. I'm a rebel spy. It wasn't me. <laughs> he did it just because if it was anything, part of his job. If anything, your cosplay is a little closer to Order 66, and we're going to oh, show something. I'm just, I'm just a rebel without <laughs> a clue. <laughs> yeah, bi a biker clone trooper. There you Marshall. go. Oh. Shantyra Marshall. Whoa. Please come to the registration area to meet your mother. <laughs> Shantyra wow. Marshall. Mm. Now. Ooh. Somebody's gonna get a beating later. We got that on <laughs> recording. <laughs> well, we are definitely at a con. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. When you lose your kids or your kids lose you, you're at a con. <laughs> for real. And you and you confuse them with every other Deadpool that you see. Yeah, for real. Son, is that you? No, I don't know you, lady. Leave me alone. <laughs> Just put a sombrero on him. <laughs> this Deadpool's different. This Deadpool is my Deadpool. Why? Because he's limping. Because I kicked him in the leg. Right. That's my Deadpool. He walked away from me, so <laughs> he'll learn. Pa, pa. <laughs> it's a remix they're playing. For real. But anyway, volatile cosplay. Yes. How did you come up with that? Why did you choose that specifically? Um, I'm going to ask you a bunch of really lame star cosplay questions first and lead into it. Yeah, yeah. It's normal. It's normal. Of course. Um, I'm a virgin to this, so my first time. Right, right. Um, a long time ago, wee, 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 long, long, long time ago when I was maybe... A little bit smaller than I am now. All right, slightly. 2007. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to write short stories, and oh, cool. I came up with a character that originally the name was Johnny Barcelona. The story was volatile, and it was like a whole, you know, mixing everything, how everybody mixes stuff nowadays, sci-fi, real world, biblical, end of the world type of stuff. And it, That's it, awesome. Yeah, it just kept on dragging, like adding characters, just like, lost or any right, other tv right. show <laughs> just drags on and then you lose the core concept of what you're writing right so when i discovered the whole cosplay scene i was like oh this is pretty cool i like to dress up i do it once a year why not do it every other month but as characters that i like right and actually meet cool people that either like the same character or cool people like yourself mr brian <laughs> that do other things outside of cosplay which right. influence people and either joining cosplay or joining a cause for good reasons. Of course. Like Order 66. Six. <laughs> um, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and um, so after a while, I u decided to create a page. At the beginning of the year, actually, I wanted to start like fresh, but even though I'm not like a big deal, but whatever. Yeah. Um, I decided to use the name Volatile, Volatile Cosplay, because aside from being a cosplayer or amateur or bottom basement, bottom, bottom of the barrel, right. bargain bin, whatever. Newbie. <laughs> a newbie. <laughs> um, I decided to use the name volatile as like what the meaning is, explosive, something like aggressive, something like a chain reaction of something powerful. Right. So I decided to be like, okay, everybody wants to be a superhero. Everybody wants to be the guy who saves the day or a fallen tragic character like right. Anakin Skywalker turning into Vader sure uh, a flawed hero yeah sort, flawed hero if you will. but I decided to start doing like cosplays that are like villains like oh, bring okay. them out because I'm not a small guy right so characters like the Rhino Juggernaut Black Mask Bane even though Bane's been overused now sure than he was before um I just want to bring out the villains because villains do have an interesting story aside from the hero. The Absolutely. hero is the one who saves the day. He saves random strangers, but the villain actually has one purpose in his life is to make the hero's life a living hell and terrorize the city and have everything to gain from doing all, all he does. You know, like robbing banks, 
uh, hostage situations like Venom kidnapping Mary Jane, right. stuff like that. Nobody ever gives credit to the bad guy. Without the bad guy, the hero would not exist. Gotcha. So basically, that's the reason why I came up with volatile cosplay because I wanted just to bring out villains. Maybe once in a while, a hero or, or a fan favorite like Ken Masters, which I'm hoping to have him ready by UltraCon. That's an exclusive. Sweet, sweet. I haven't said anything. Ho oh. ho. Um, and I am working on something that because of Ellie Marie, she right. had a had an event at Geek Alliance where she was like showing people how to use Warbler. And Ooh. I kind of got the ideas of how, how to use Warbler to efficiency, you know, to a proper efficient way not to waste it and to reuse it, which hopefully by Supercon of next year, I will have like maybe a juggernaut outfit ready. What? Yeah. That'd be awesome. I was trying to do the Rhino. Oh, we got Michael Jackson now. Yeah. Um, I yeah. wanted to do the Rhino, but it's kind of hard. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. That costume is strange. You got yeah. a rhino head on your head, and then it's a full body suit. But you're you're built, so you don't have to worry about, Whoa. you know. I am built. You heard that, ladies. I am built. Yeah, he's, like a horse. He's built like a rhino, if you will. Oh, rhino. <laughs> <laughs> Short and stubby, no? Yeah, exactly. Um, I can't do the rhino. <laughs> well, you can do... Well, technically... It just wouldn't. Uh, it anybody wouldn't. Anybody could do whoever they want. It's I just agree with that. I all right. I'll rephrase it. I wouldn't do the rhino. Oh, okay. Because my personally, I don't think I could bring it justice. But that's my okay. personal style. You know what true, I mean? True, true, true. Everyone's got their thing. But that's actually pretty awesome. Volatile cosplay. Yeah. So that you could, in essence, explode onto the scene. Exactly. Oh. I mean, right now I'm just doing makeshift. Uh, cosplays that are just anything I can just slap on and like <laughs> what you see now right just slap on and go out the door and go to a con and just have fun because basically right. what you come here for is to have fun hang out exactly. with friends and just enjoy the day um, people say oh this is nerdy this is this and that it's true but everybody when they were small always dressed up right everybody watched cartoons absolutely and people bought toys right and comic books so I don't see why people would be like, oh, no, I don't go to that because, uh, you know, it happens to be uh, childish. Right. Everybody's a kid on the inside. Absolutely. If you if you say you're not a kid and you have children of your own and you're playing with their toys, you're still a kid at heart. Right. So right. why not come to these events and introduce the younger generation to something healthy? This is actually healthy, except the negativity that happens behind the scenes. For real. Which I won't get into it because it's really ridiculous. And right. thank God I haven't heard nothing of that. Right. Because, you know, my I'm built like a rhino, and I'll just right. go through them. <laughs> For real. But That actually, uh, that makes a lot of sense. I was just, on that vein, I was just talking to somebody last night about um, bullying, yeah. specifically when it pertains to things that somebody enjoys versus, you know, cosplay, for instance. Yeah. You know, there are some people who don't understand it who will be like, oh, what do you do? You dress up in little costumes, blah, 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 blah. But then I equated it to, you know, what's more ridiculous, dressing up like a stormtrooper or painting yourself half one color, half another color with feathers on your head, screaming about a team moving a ball across the field. Yeah. You know what I mean? To yeah. each their own. In my opinion, I think everyone should be allowed to like what they like the way that exactly. they like it. Exactly. With no you judgment. I mean? Exactly. You know, if, if that's your thing, awesome. If it's not, awesome. You know what yeah. I mean? It shouldn't be uh, a hierarchy, if you will. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. to where, yeah, well, I dress up as my favorite team, but you're in a, you know, an Iron Man suit. You're pretty lame. You know, it's like, why can't people just be people? Whoever says that Iron Man is lame, costume wise. Right. Is so wrong. Something's right? wrong with their life. Not, not, not directly, but something's wrong. Absolutely. Because I would rather dress as Iron Man but paint them as my favorite team. All right. And Hybrid go to the them. event dressed up as, let's say, the, the, I don't know, the Jets or the Dolphins or right. the Cowboys. But in an Iron Man suit painted in their colors. Right. Exactly. You combine both. And that's the way for you to like what you like the way that you like it. Exactly. So actually on that, um, we're Facebook friends. Exactly. And I actually like following in all of your stuff because Whoa. I'm, me, I consider myself Liz as well, you. It's very, um, you try to put out a lot of positive energy. Yes, you know, I do. Which I, I really appreciate because once Thank you, you, once you uh, specifically in Florida, because that's all that I know of personally, when you get into the cosplay community, there's this like darkness oh. of awful, you know. It's great, but it can very quickly turn into like a judgmental almost fashion contest. It's like, it's like a uh, metaphorical 
uh, pit, like Batman, Bruce Wayne, falling into a, uh, he's walking in the light, falls into a pit, and next thing you know, it's full of darkness, but he arises from the darkness exactly. as Batman. So I, I love that there's people like you that are carrying the torch and spreading positivity, because in my opinion, it's very much needed. It's true. I mean, I do it because, okay, yeah, I might be a, a, a huge guy, but in both ways, in, in, in height and also, because I'm not uh, a, a really, you know, I'm not fit, like muscular, whatever, but I know for a fact that when I was younger, I was smaller. Right. And people used to pick on me. People used to say, oh, why you like toys? Why you bring toys to school? Yeah, I brought them because I was bored. All right, dude, Ooh, why not? Nobody wants to learn the good stuff that you need later on in life. You just want to play with your G.I. Joes when you're like seven or eight years old. Right. Um, I used to get picked on a lot and all that stuff, but I... Uh, there's some people that will take the negativity and carry it through all their lives and then transfer it over to other people and just be the same way that the bullies were when he was when that person was younger right and as a person who took psychology for a few years never did anything with it sure i just did it because i love to understand the human mind why people act a certain way um be able to read people and understand if something's bothering them you have to either stop what you're doing and talk to that person before it ends up being something tragic or something just that they will harm themselves. Of course. Or if you're the one who's saying something, you can understand that that person's being bothered by what you're saying. You can just stop it. Not like some people that just keep on, keep on, keep of on. Of course, of course. But being bullied all my life, I took that and I decided to use some positivity to it because I know what certain people go through. Of course. Being picked on by your looks, by your size by what you like and that is so wrong because agreed oh speaking of so wrong we're here and they all walked in right now shirley ellie nerd bunny danica and uh envious uh oh hide don't make so. eye contact see if they notice <laughs> <laughs> I, I had the whole lineup <laughs> they're walking in they're, they're walking like they're in uh mean girls like in an rpg <laughs> yeah. in line okay so back to what i was saying i i just want to bring positivity to to what I can to as many people as I can reach to in the cosplay world because right. there's so much negativity. And before I even got into this scene and, and, and I started meeting people like you, Brian, and all the girls, I realized that all of you are very positive and very goal-oriented people. And that's kind of hard to find in a world where, in a, in a community where there's so much negativity that you'll just drop everything and give up. Right. And it completely disappear from social media. For sure. Which social media is the best way. Back in the day, it was just, you saw somebody in school or you saw somebody somewhere and, and you spoke to them for like a brief moment and you move on. You don't know what's wrong with that person. Right. And at least through social media, you can always stay in contact with people that are hundreds of miles away. Of course. You know, you know if something's wrong or if you know that you can reach out to a wider audience. You're not just restricted to a location. You now have access to the whole world. Right. Twitter is an awesome device to use oh, to promote yes. yourself. It's global. Of course. So once in a while, I put out there like positive, you know, comments or positive reactions to some, some things that I saw. You know, like, oh, here at a con, I saw someone, oh, dressed up as a character that other people will say did not fit them. Right. But me being me, I walked up to the person, complimented them, took a picture and said, look, keep on doing what you're doing because what you're doing is awesome. You know, and you enjoy it. Obviously, you're here. Right. You dressed up as a character, your favorite character. Screw what anybody says. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that person will walk away with a positive reaction to what they were doing. And maybe 50 other people might say something negative, but they'll always remember to that one positive comment. Exactly. And hopefully that will help them. Absolutely. Overcome all that negativity. So and that's actually really yeah. cool that you take something that, like, you're taking cosplay and a platform to make a bigger difference, which I think says a lot about your character, which is pretty great. Because I, I, I come from the same thing, super bullied. So yeah. it's like, I remember that um, that Robin Williams quote that goes around. That's like, you know, usually the loneliest people will try to make everybody else feel good around them because they don't want them to feel how they've felt. Exactly. You know, and I, that's 100% true. Mm -hmm. You know, so people who have been through a lot, as you said, you can either become bitter about it or you can become the change in it. And I think, not to butter you up too much, but I actually think there needs to be more people like you as opposed to... You know, it's turning into a fashion contest. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there are people that will get, um, you know, like you said, they'll be like, that character doesn't fit you. What are you doing with it? 
you know, and that seriously damages somebody who was really excited to portray that character. And it completely so. shuts them down, which is bad, you know, Absolutely. getting shut down by people you don't even know. Right. It's like, and even worse, if it's somebody who you know that will secretly be like, oh, this person looks ridiculous. If that person looks ridiculous and in their eyes they don't, be positive and just be like, look, you, you look great, but let me just give you some constructive criticism, but don't take it the wrong way if you exactly. want to help them. Don't be like, that top looks really bad on you. Be like, oh, you know, it's really cool. I use these buttons. Exactly. You know? Yeah, there's just... I mean, I'm not going to say I've seen a cosplay that I'm like, oh, you know, maybe something was off on it that threw me off at, the, at first, but then I realized that that's the way they feel comfortable with the suit. Exactly. So why would I be rating on their parade when they feel great about how they are. If you don't have, okay, it's another another uh, a quote. If you don't have nothing good to say, don't say it. Absolutely. Because really, any little thing you say, they might take it the wrong way. And that's not good. For sure. Never take things to heart because people will always have something negative to say, regardless if they like it or not. Right, right. Be like, oh no, I don't like this, I don't like that. Well, F you, I don't need that. Exactly. You know? exactly. I don't need There's that, I'm happy. There's enough negativity in the world. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Um, everybody wants to fix something in their lives. For Actually, sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Positive people want to fix things in their lives by making themselves happy with loving what they do. But then there's people that want to fix the world before fixing themselves. Correct. Don't skip the first basic steps in something because if you try to jump from fixing yourself, like flaws or whatever, maybe you're an ass. Maybe you're, you're very stubborn. That, things like that will never change. That's part of your DNA. You're part of your personality. Right. But if you're going to be throwing negativity towards people that are happy in their lives, there's something wrong with you. Right. Check yourself. Yeah. Check yourself For before sure. you go, oh, I'm going to save the Amazon because the trees are, are more important than the human lives around me. Right. Everybody, everything and everybody's important. I agree. Nothing is under anything else. You know, not to get too political, not to get too with the sure. world news, but everybody knows what's going on in the world. Right. And all I'm going to say about that is worry about yourself first and maybe grab other aspects of life that needs to, need to be um, attended to right. through social media. Don't lessen the value of one thing over something else. Right. Everything is equal. We're all born in the same planet. We all care about the planet. Most of us do. Some of us don't. And... Be careful in what you in what you say to other people. Right. That are not sensitive. No, I mean everybody's sensitive. For sure. But it's just you know be positive, be re reinforce uh, the good things that people want to do in their lives. Right. If you don't like it, keep your mouth shut. Unless for sure. it's something bad. I mean, I'm saying right, right. if the person's in drugs, then you got to step in oh, there yeah, and do something. Oh yeah, for sure. But so if you're saying you yeah. everybody, everybody matters, and as a sense, everybody has something to say. So. Yeah choose what you say to other people carefully because you could have a negative impact on somebody else exactly so everybody has the cap the capacity to do good yeah and you would say they choose not to it. do it right right which, right. Is, which is horrible for sure well that means you know there needs to be people like us that are fighting that extra fight i mean i'm just a little voice in in a big uh in a big world in a big voice box but at least the people who i touch sure you know, quote unquote touch um, they'll feel better. I For mean, sure. I mean, it, I, I dig following you on all your stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it's this is the thing. You never know specifically on, you know, Twitter. Yeah. Anyone can see that. Even people that you aren't following yeah. can stumble upon your profile. Just put one little hashtag you know? and boom. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, look, you know? it's Adrian Paul. Highlander. Awesome. We're getting so many people here. I just, the, the theme kicked into my head. Yeah, right? I am <laughs> That's all I can sing before anybody sues us. That's so awesome. Actually, in uh, in the cosplay vein, um, how do you pick your cosplays? Do you have a uh, uh, obviously villains you're you're uh, yeah. pretty particular about? I don't pick by popularity okay. of the character. I usually pick by how tragic their stories are, like yeah. how much of an impact they caused in the world that they're associated to. Like uh, an example, before the TV show Daredevil on Netflix, right. uh, Kingpin was a major force oh, in, yeah. you know, Spider-Man's world, in Daredevil's world, but they never really focused too much on who he is until they started doing that with different writers. It shows you that the Kingpin wasn't really that that much of a bad guy. He just had a really rough childhood, right, and a really rough life that caused him to be 
the guy who he is in the comic books. Right. Which he's trying to fix his area. Like, he's not trying to fix the world, but he's just trying to fix his community right. to being under his control. But he's helping it in the process of, you pay me, I'll protect you from anything outside of the community. Right. Like, you know, traditional gangster. For but sure. then you got people like Daredevil, Iron Fist. Yeah. <laughs> they want to <laughs> ruin defenders. that. The Defenders. Yeah, the Defenders. They want to defend something that doesn't need defending, even though it is like a dictatorship. Sure. But they are better off than having help from the city, which they're not helping, obviously. Right. This is called Hell's Kitchen for some reason. Right. I, I've said before, like, um, in, in Daredevil specifically, yeah. his storyline, Daredevil and Wilson Fisk technically want the same thing. They're just going two different ways about it. Like, uh, like a Malcolm X... Martin Luther King type of thing, right, like right. Ex, uh, Xavier and Magneto. For sure, for so sure. So it's always that. It's not like they're purely evil, but they're just made evil by the the heroes that want to fight against them. Right. Which is it, it, that's the problem. That's the problem. The he, the heroes are the ones that cause everything. Like an example, um, Venom is not a bad guy. He's just a guy who got trapped inside a a suit right uh, Eddie Brock got trapped in the suit where sure basically um he's being possessed but right. then later on he realized hey um I can be good right because he's not really that bright of a guy first off true but <laughs> the suit actually helped him to be this like animal to go and just be like I hate Spider-Man let's right. go beat him up let's go ruin his life He's, well, actually, he's not, like, a, a very impactful character. He's just very popular with people. Yeah, he's my favorite Marvel villain. But the only reason why I like him is just for the fact... I, I wouldn't dress up as him because it, you need to do justice to Venom. Yeah, that's a hard one. And that's hard because you can't really... As of now, there's no suit that you can wear that can do the symbiote right. uh, effects. But he's just a straight-up guy who just wants to ruin Spider-Man's life. Yes. So that's just a one-on-one -on -one type of thing. You know, I'm going to kidnap your girlfriend one day. I'm going to take your, your aunt out on a date, you know, right. to ruin your day. Um, but people like, let's say, okay, Wilson Fisk, Rhino, I mean, not counting their intelligence, I'm just counting their their, their fierce right. presence their, when like, they're around. Their, like, personality yeah. as far as, like, they have big personalities. Well, I just realized there's two dumb characters in there, Rhino and, and Juggernaut. They're not the brightest guys. Right. But they're the strongest and feared. Oh, yeah, dude. You know, amongst the X-Men and Spider-Man. Um, let's say, there's one that I like. He's not really a hero. You can say anti-hero, but really it's the guy who doesn't really give a damn. Right. Uh, Max Payne. Right, Which right. is a character Your who, Max Payne is great, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I get happy when people notice me. Like, hey, you're Max Payne? I'm like, are you asking or you're telling me? Right, like, yeah. <laughs> you know it because you mentioned it. So come over here and take a picture with me. Right. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's exciting uh, when people notice who you are, oh, know who you are, and I notice I know that you. feeling very yeah. well. Oh, you get that all the time. <laughs> Even when you're out of costume, yeah. people know who I'm you are. I'm in this, and they're like, you people the, just stare at me. <laughs> like, do I know you? Uh... Maybe. Right. <laughs> Do you follow you me on Facebook? Me? <laughs> Would you like to go out to I dinner? I did that too. Facebook, Twitter, or, or, or Instagram. Which one? And everyone's like, oh, All depending three. depending on which one, depends on how I think they know me. Yeah. Like if it's like Instagram, like, All right, you see me at the gas pump a lot, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> because I stalk you every now and right? then. <laughs> woman, calm down. I'm a one woman man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so then actually, what is your favorite cosplay of yours? A lot of cosplayers get that question. Like what? Who, who I have in my arsenal, quote-unquote, that I like to wear. Basically, Big Boss. Yeah, Even Big Boss. Even though my Big Boss is not, like, the traditional Big Boss that everybody knows, but people yesterday noticed me. I noticed from the pictures. You look awesome. Yeah, I mean, people who have the eye and play the game and know what they, they, they're going to talk about, they see you and they're like, hey, look, I know who you are. You're Big Boss. Right. And they ask me, hey, which, which um, Big Boss are you? And I'm here like... Well, I always say in between Metal Gear 3 and um, Peace Walker. Right. Because in that time frame, you don't really know what he was doing. So you can just say, oh, he was there wearing camouflage and right. bulletproof vest. And he was just you've got, it up. <laughs> you've got creative liberties. Yeah. Sure. You know, I always try to stick into like in, in an era where the character wasn't present in the game or you don't know much about him. So you can just have liberties to do whatever you want. He's getting and, loud. <laughs> yeah, he's really loud. <laughs> but um, Big Boss, because of the fact that he started off as 
a a hero. Not really a hero, but he was a pawn in a bigger scheme. That when he realized what was going on, he slowly dis fell into this descent into darkness. Right. To the point where, not counting Metal Gear Solid V, but his history, his history according to the original storyline, is that he just fell from grace like a fallen angel and basically he just wanted to rule the world right to end all governments because all of them were corrupted and end all wars by having one one government like a new world order type of thing sure. one government one army one nation uh, in this planet under his control basically right because without fear you really can't control the people and true that's why he had the metal gear the metal gear from metal gear <laughs> Right. Uh, in his um, in his arsenal, basically. And he just wanted to control the world. And to have a character that dedicated to do all that stuff and going through all the, the mishaps and all the punishment he had to go through, to get to that point, it shows you how much dedication he had because without spoiling anything, if you play the games, you'll know that he's been just going down. From Metal Gear 3, his storyline from 1960-something, all the way to 1990-something where Solid Snake kills him. Right. It's just he keeps going down deeper into that hell. Right. To the point he just doesn't care about his own life. He just cares about his ideals living on. Sure. Through an apprentice or through a, a person who he mentor, anything. Just as long as somebody's following his, his ideals, he can die happy. Right. But right. then in the final game of Solid Snake's story, which is Metal Gear 4, um, they gave him redemption. Right. Kind of like a Darth Vader at the end of Return of, of the Jedi. But through the course of his whole younger life, he was just a bad guy. Right. You know, he just woke up one day and said, hey, you know what? I'm tired of doing this. Right. I'm and that happens. Bad guy. Why not? Yeah, that's like basically my favorite cosplay is, is Big Boss because he is one tragic story that is loved by a lot of fans. Oh, of Even course. though he's a bad guy, people love him because he, they know that it's not his fault. Right. He was pushed. He's like a victim of circumstance. Exactly. That makes sense. And then it will be Max Payne because Max Payne, that guy's been through hell. Yeah. <laughs> you know, murdered wife, murdered newborn. Uh, his reputation was tarnished. He um, went from a dude in a suit to a bald bearded guy in a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, and a lot of painkillers and a lot of alcohol later, the <laughs> guy's suicidal. For sure. And if you ever see Max Payne 3, which I would recommend whoever is listening to... Just look at the, the, the story mode. Like, just watch it. Because the game, actually, if you do, you'll, you'll still get a, a feeling of how the character is. But if you don't, if you haven't never played a Max Payne game, you have to try them out. They're old, right. but they're, they're interesting. Because sure. it shows you how the character goes from being heartbroken, um, devastated by everything that's going on in his life. And he just says, F this. Right. I'm just going to go all out. And each game is just one suicidal leap after another. Sure. And then at the end of, the, at the end of it all, it's, a, it's an old game, so I'm just going to say it out loud. Right. Um, at the end of the story of part three, he's close to dying where he's just realizing, you know what, I'm going to take these bastards with me. That's he smart. does. But he doesn't die. So he's like, you know what, this is funny. Right. Hey, hey. I did all this. I got shot millions of times. Never got hit to the point I'm going to die. And I'm walking out of here with half a billion dollars in a damn gym bag drinking a uh -huh. Heineken in, in Baja, Mexico. It's a pretty sweet setup. That's a way to end the damn story. Right? Just let him be, <laughs> let him be a millionaire somewhere like in the Amazon, just right? living on the treehouse. He suffered too much. Agreed. Those are the type of characters that I enjoy. People who have a lot of dilemma, a lot of contradictions in their life, like should I do good, should I do bad, or just straight up violent because... People adore the heroes because they're bright and shiny, but they never appreciate the people who brought them there, which are the villains. Right, right. That makes sense. Yeah, because, you know, it's like uh, the Joker says in the comics, like, you know, what would you be without me? Exactly. And what would I be without you? That makes sense. So they help each other. One hand washes the other. For sure, for sure. So in, uh, in the video game vein, you stream. Uh, oh. Yes, I do. No, I thought I hit something. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Um, yes, I stream. I pretty much stream like little quickies, like just a half an hour, an hour of a, of a game, just yep. to like push out a game that basically people don't play or probably don't play as much as other people. Let's say Tetris Flower, right. Tetris and Flower, which is a, a Sony game. Other games like Resident Evil and stuff like that that people are not 
are probably watching but not playing because there's like games like Destiny, Halo coming out, sure. Call of Duty, stuff like that, Assassin's Creed. Right. Um, I stream just like those very under the radar games, or they okay. were once popular and then now it's like they're under the radar. Right. Um, I usually stream on Twitch or on YouTube now that they have a new app for um, PlayStation 4 that you can just stream directly. Well, they just have in general now you can stream from whatever system to the to YouTube, which okay. is pretty cool. And I just usually stream whenever I have a chance. I used to do it every day. Right. But now because of work and then the cons, is like I kind of toned down. Sure. But when I do, I usually, if the game seems like a game, like eventually soon I'm going to um, stream Wolfenstein, the Old cool. Blood which is like the last game they brought out for the, the new remake of Wolfenstein. Right. That I'll probably just stream it through because it's like a five, six hour game. Oh, cool. So cool. it's going to be like one of those like marathon type of things that just go from the beginning to the end. Sure. And just have it there so people can just jump in, look at it. Oh, I never played this game. Oh, yeah, I guess when I get a chance, I'm going to buy it. Right. That's basically what I do. I just try to push out a game. Like, I had the luck of um, getting um, this company called Ten Tons. They're a, a company okay. from Finland. Cool. That they do like these mobile games. Hmm. And now they pushed into the consoles, which are just like regular, like like there's one called Tennis in the Face. So it's like a you got to do like a pull style type of tennis game that you got to aim, you got to rebound the ball. Oh, okay. And hit the guys that are hiding behind walls. Nice. Um, the company noticed that I was playing that game because I was really? like promoting it because I really liked it. Sure. Believe it or not, it's like Angry Birds when it first came out. Oh, okay. Everybody was on it. Right. Um, I played this game two years after it came out. It was on PS4 for, for like a dollar. You, you can't say no to a dollar. Oh, sweet, yeah. You know, they say you can't buy that for a dollar. I'll buy that for a dollar. Right, yeah. Even if it's bad, dude. <laughs> Even it's if it's bad. Dollar. But it turned out to be an awesome game. Killed the game. Killed it. Yeah. <laughs> Company noticed, and I go, hey, uh, I was playing this game called ten, um, Tennis in the Face. I really enjoyed it. Everybody should play it. Hashtag Tennis in the Face. Hashtag sure. 10 Tons. And then they reached out to me. Really? Through email or something. Uh, uh, where, where's my email that you guys know? Right. Oh, well, it's on your on your Twitter. I was like, oh, sh cool. And like, here, have these codes, download the rest of our um, list of games, and tell us what you think. Wow. I was like, yo, I never had that experience. And a lot of Dude. gamers do get that. Sure. That chance and privilege to be like, a company goes, hey, look, I'm going to send you this code, download this game, play it, and let us know what you think. Wow. And slowly... They start like either throwing you more games, or they go like, "Oh, this gamer here loves our game. Um, check them out." You know, they promote you, you promote them, title to you. Right. Which is cool. For sure. For a gamer, that's a big deal. Right. Free yeah, because that's how you get notoriety exactly. or any sort of audience because everybody plays video games. Yeah. You Even know? though they don't say, "Oh, I don't have a, I don't play consoles, I don't stay home all day," but you have a cell phone. For sure. The cell phones, you can play games, so don't lie to yourself. Right, yeah. Even if it's a poker game, you're still playing a game. I'm on Clash of Clans every day. And that's a popular <laughs> game. Awesome. I play on my phone freaking uh, Angry Birds nice. to kill time at work. So. That's cool, though. Plus and it's you, free. Uh, you've got some significant numbers, I've heard recently. Oh. You hit a milestone. Yeah, close yeah. to 700,000, which is for a nobody. I'm going to say nobody because on YouTube, there's people way beyond where I'm at but 700,000 people uh, views insane. it's crazy for someone who only has 273 but I guess it's just the content that I put for that sure. people just happen to pass by watch the video and just move on like a pit stop sure which I don't mind dude still counts yeah it's something if you take what you've done already do again half of what you've accomplished you have a million exactly that is crazy I'm I'm, 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 I'm I swear if, if I reach a million. I'm just going to throw a pizza party, even, for, even if it's for myself. Right. Pizza party. Yay. <laughs> order, order a pizza and then, like, review the pizza while you're eating. Be like, oh, yes. I made the goal. And this, this is pizza the is delicious. <laughs> the, gr the greatest pizza I've ever had. Right. The cheese was just Thanks to amazing. you guys. Thanks and to by you guys. That, um, you guys made me feel good enough that I bought myself a pizza. <laughs> exactly. This is our pizza. <laughs> it's healthy. It's healthy, but, hey, here you go. Pizza. Absolutely. Put it on the screen so people can, like, lick it. Right. <laughs> But it, it's cool. I mean, it's cool when you get, like, these milestones where you, like, whoa, you know? Like, how would I get that far without people actually helping me? Right, right, for like, sure. when a cosplayer hits over 9,000, which is a thing now. All over right. 9,000! What's that like? <laughs> which is cool. Right. I, I like that when I see when I see these girls, they, they reach a certain milestone on their thing. It's amazing. Dude, I started following Liz when she had under 9,000. And I was like, oh, oh really? sweet. In a year, she's gone like plus 30K. 
Yes. And like rightfully so. Liz is one of the best people I've ever met. She's so great. I've met the best people, yourself included, in this community. Well, <laughs> like, dude, it's so awesome. But before we move on to that, yes. what is your favorite game that you've streamed so far? My favorite game will have to be... Uh, it's tied. Okay. Outlast and Slenderman The Arrival. That sounds terrifying. Yes, because I play it when I was playing it, because I actually quit playing a Slenderman because I... I swear to you, I had a nightmare one time, and I had to run to the bathroom because I was about to crap myself. That's oh, how scary man. it was. And you're not going to be like, oh, the graphics are, are cheap. It's not that. It's just the sense that you're in the woods or in a warehouse or in some dark place, and you hear this weird sound. You're like, what the hell? It's not Slender Man because he's supposed to be in front of you. It's right. some other thing that's running after you that Slender Man's oh. throwing at you. Oh. It's just the, the, the sense of you can't fight him. That's right. what I like. That's why Outlast and, and Slender Man are like, to me, like those games that when I stream, people just hop on just to see me get scared. Oh, right. For sure. They love that. They <laughs> love that. And Outlast, I remember there's the one part in Outlast where in the DLC, um, the, well, whatever, the DLC that came out, I forgot it. <laughs> I forgot right, it already. Right. Um, it's like a prequel. Prequel slash sequel type of thing. And you get involved with this spirit that you only see for a brief second at the, in the original story mode. Okay. I screamed. I oh, screamed. Yeah? I, oh, it was horrible. <laughs> People were on there like, oh, wait for it. I'm like, what? And then I'm never paying attention. I'm going to keep playing my game. I'm here at like 3 in the morning running, running, and this spirit came out of nowhere. Like this experiment just jumps out of the ground, grabs me, and throws me, and I, I shit you not. <laughs> I threw the controller across the room. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Three in the morning. And then I'm like, I think people heard that. Oh no. People outside heard that. <laughs> and I'm like, I quit this game. Oh. I'm not playing it. But then it's one of those that like, once you go to the bathroom, you recover, you get something to drink. Like, right. I'm like, I'm gonna beat this guy. <laughs> Cause I looked online, it was like, oh, you're in the last 10 minutes of the game. It turned out to be an hour later. Oh, of course. And of I was course. like, okay, this is cool. You know, that's why I like those two games, Outlast and, and Slender Man. Even though I, I beat one, I'll eventually get back to Slender Man. Right. But that one game day. is just, yeah, one day <laughs> during the day. It's just, it's, it's, it's a crazy game. That's why I like the horror games, especially yeah. now with, um, oh, and another one was uh, PT. Yeah. The playable teaser for Silent Hills, which never came out now. Oh, nice. Um, I still have that, so I usually stream it to try to do speed runs, uh, and once in a while I do jump because I forget that there's sure. the chick uh, just hops out of nowhere. Ooh. So yeah, my my favorite uh, streaming games are, 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 are like horror games, basically. That's crazy. Yeah. What's your favorite game, uh, like in general of all time? Do you have a favorite? Yes, I do. Yeah. And it just brings it down. Like the, all the games that I played, it will have to be. old it's really old it's sure, called I've parasite been... eve yeah yeah from 1998 from when it used to be called square soft okay now square enix oh uh, okay but it's a, a supposed sequel to a book called parasite eve a japanese book hmm. that dealt with mitochondrias and stuff like that before star wars sure. devastated the whole series with the mitochondria power right this thing is basically like a parasite lives within us that uses our body heat and energy to uh, maintain itself Ah, and through okay. millions of years, it decided to just live with us in harmony until one day said, you know what, we're strong enough to live on our own. So they start, oh, people who sick. are not evolved, they start melting their, their plasma and they just turn into like goo and they mutate animals. They mutate things just to become like this whole new race of animals. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty cool game. Like the what? main character is like a, a, a New York, uh, she's like a model. She's sure. a New York cop. They gotta be. Yeah, <laughs> and she's like petite as hell. And she's a New York cop. I'm like, really, you're a New York cop, and you <laughs> sure look like a model. Sure, you are. Yeah, yeah. You'd and last. <laughs> yeah, you'll last. And then she gets these powers. She gets these powers, and she's able to. She's a, she's a immune to everything. Oh, okay. So nothing happens to her. So she can't burn. She can't nothing. Okay, she definitely will last now. Ex yeah, with the powers. <laughs> but she has like these partners that can't help her because they can't walk in through through the hot zones because right. they'll die. So the whole game is just her trying to fight these. 
these monsters, <laughs> <laughs> the, the girl's loud, these monsters, while saving the city and saving herself because she realizes, spoiler, it is a freaking almost 20 year old game. Right. Um, it turns out that the main villain has part of her sister's twin sister's DNA inside of her because of a car accident. She got her kidney when she was younger. Uh. And then, oh, the original infected person, uh, one of the girls got the eye, one of them got the uh, kidney. And then one of the twins died, and then that one got the organs because the body was already contaminated with the mitochondria that wanted to do the revolution right. or rebellion. Sure. And then the adult uh, named Melissa, she was an opera singer. She was, like, down on her luck, and then she, somehow she wishes for the main star to die, and then she dies. Oh. And she turns out she realized, hey, I know I have, I have powers. That's I a can, pretty intense power. <laughs> yeah. So she can burn people at, at will. She can um, metamorphosize your body into whatever she wants. Good Lord. So it's a constant seven-day battle from day one to day seven. It's like during Christmas into the new year. So uh, it's like a okay. cool game, a Christmassy, like, uh, diehard Yeah, I was about to say, it's yeah. like diehard. <laughs> it, it goes through Christmas to New Year's. And... It's a really cool game, and that's like to me my favorite game because it was s such an obscured game. Sure. That only people who follow Square Enix knew about the game when it was coming out Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII. Right. They knew that was their in-between game, and it was cool. I bought it day one, and I had it up to the point where I was like, I lost this too, and I was like, crap. It was a huge game. Right. And to get the real ending, you had to replay the game two more times. Wow. Yeah, so it was like a seven-day thing. You have to repeat it three more times. The real ending turns out that the main villain is not the one who you killed, but the sister that was reborn Whoa. in the Empire State Building. And she was, like, trying to bring life to the ultimate being that was going to, like, destroy the world. That is crazy. It was an awesome game. I mean, if, if whoever gets a chance, look it up. Parasite Eve, that's a game that needs to come back. Yeah? Like, it's a classic. They, That'd be pretty intense with new it, graphics. Yes, it would. I mean, the last attempt they did was in 2009, like, for, like, a 10th anniversary type of thing. Oh, okay. Called The Third Birthday, which was only a PSP game. That's why nobody knew about it. Right. Because PSP sense. was dying around that time. Right. But. It's like the Kingdom Hearts. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 2, 8 card game DS. Yes. Not great. And now we've got, like, what, 2.9 or something coming yeah, out? Yeah, some new thing not coming three. out. We're yeah. like, we're just not going to give you three. It's going to get to three, but maybe <laughs> by the time we have kids, it'll be like, right. hey, look, we got part three out. I talked to, um, I had Mausler on. She's a Star Wars cosplayer. Yeah. She does a couple others. She's she's awesome. Well, I talked to her about this, and we were talking about, um, you. did you beat Kingdom Hearts 2? Yes. Did you beat it 100% to get the Keyblade Wars trailer? Yes. What is the point of that trailer? It, it, you think it, about it? Because you beat it 100%, you're like, oh, snap, Kingdom Hearts 3, the Keyblade Wars, it's going to be nuts. How long ago was that? <laughs> um, see, the thing is that they, then they made um, these spinoffs. I never got to touch them, but right. supposedly they touched on that story. Okay. And supposedly that key war, uh, the Keyblade War, was sometime before the main storyline of Kingdom Hearts, I believe. That makes sense. So it's like they, they give you these little pieces of information in the, I think it's something, something days. I forgot what it was like. Something over something days. Oh, yeah, like 360 something over. Yeah, some, yeah. some like month with year and days. I don't know what so weeks. Strange. <laughs> some strange. Some strange things. Not three. Is it's the, not three. The and then they made Dream Drop Distance or 3D. That's so strange. It's another side story. And uh, Birth so by Sleep is another side story. And oh they all touched God. on that Keyblade War. Uh, so they just don't want to give us three, it seems. Well, three supposedly will come out eventually, like maybe in a <laughs> year or two or five. Yeah, right, or 12, who knows. <laughs> 12. <laughs> but they're working on it. I've I seen, like, things, like, clips and stuff. They're trying to keep it under wraps. Yeah. I'm assuming it might not be the final game because they're probably debating because it's money. Disney wants oh, of money. of course. It all comes down to money. But they're trying to, I guess, because of Star Wars Episode Seven, they're trying to keep it under wraps because maybe there's some uh, elements of the story. That makes sense. Because Disney want to owns Star Wars now, so they exactly. could put Star Wars in Kingdom and Marvel. Hearts. That'd be insane. They, they say they will add it because they saw a character model of Mickey holding a lightsaber. Nice. A lightsaber keyblade, I mean. That'd be sweet. And then another one has, like, I think it was Donald dressed up as Iron Man. What? Or something similar to it. I'm for it. So, so basically they're just mashing everything up. And they might be the final game. That'd be, I, I mean, not, you know, money-wise smart, but that'd be smart to do. Well, it will make a lot of money. To wait until, oh, dude, Disney's going to make so much money this year. It's called DLC. They'll make their money there. I DLC. Think, <laughs> uh, I see a lot of those um, uh, those things that are like, you know, 
Avatar broke this record. Avengers made half a billion dollars. I'm like, that's cute. Wait till December. Exactly. <laughs> and then next year with Batman and Superman. I, th I don't think anything's going to touch Star Wars, man. Yeah, it won't be Star Just Wars. Just for the name of the franchise alone. Like, people that don't even like Star Wars have never seen it are like, I'll go they're, see that. They're going to go to see what, uh, what the hype's about. I, I'm going to quote what they say. I'm going to go see that movie just to see what the nerds are talking about. That's right. That's really? right. Dude, Star Wars is back. It's, it's going back. to rock no, Isn't every it been record. back? Isn't it been back since uh, Force Friday? Right. I think so. I think so. Came dude, back, like, dude it never toys. left for me. <laughs> it never has. And, and to be honest with you, I saw the original Star Wars back in the 80s. Like nice. 87, 88. Right. I think before you were born. Oh, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I watched them. I was like, oh, this is cool. But Star Trek was a TV show. So I'm here like... I watched this more because it's more of it than okay. Star Wars. But then when they re-released them in 97, and I was in high school, I was like, I want to see these movies in the theater. And I saw the movie in theaters. This was, I, be I think, with the CG effects. Yeah, or yeah. I don't know. the special editions. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is awesome. Like, I understand why it's a big deal. Right. Went out the same day, bottom of the Neon Falcon. Nice. Then nice. it was like, Star Wars. I mean, Star Trek, what? Right, yeah. Star Wars is where it's at. And then I heard that I guess that was like a funding for episode one, like right. the re-releases. So I'm here like, wait, the Phantom Menace, Darth Maul. Right. They're starting from the beginning to complete the saga. Right. Wow. Went the first day. Movie blew my mind. A few right. days later, I realized Jar Jar Binks was uh, horrible. Oh, you don't like Jar Jar? Uh, no, horrible in the sense that they could have like give him minimum screen time and he was still he would have been awesome he was definitely for the kids for the kids that's and that's what the money that's where the money's at right so um i was like jar jar binks didn't ruin the movie for me it just right. it was too much of him to yeah that swallow. makes sense for sure yeah. i always i looked at it um the prequel trilogy wasn't for the generation that the original trilogy was for it was for their kids exactly but just like episode 7 it's going to be for the next generation. So there's probably going to be something in it that a lot of people are going to be like, that was dumb. I think that that's what's going to be no Jar Jar character. It's going to end yeah. up being that BB-8. That makes sense. That's going to be the thing. That it doesn't sense. speak. Probably do something cute, fall down or roll right. around or avoid a lose bunch of... Lose his head. Yeah. Lose his head. Or, or, or get shot by a bunch of stormtroopers and not get hit. Right. Inside joke of they can't hit anything. Sure. And it's going to be like, oh my God, no! Oh, he, he, he's alive. Right. Yes. But I'm for it, man. It's going to be awesome. I don't care who you are, young, old, um, somebody into Star Wars or not, everybody and their dogs are going to go see that movie. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's I look Star at Wars. it as, like, I didn't, I didn't like Star Trek growing up. I tried it a couple times, but it just wasn't my bag. But I loved the movies. Yes, I know that Into Darkness gets a lot of uh, oh, hate. Oh, my God, it's amazing. I bought it I on Blu-ray the day it came out. I loved it. I loved the first one. Into Darkness, I was like, somehow they did even better than the first one. Yeah, even though people like nitpick, but everybody does that about right. life. So exactly. exactly. I, I take that with a grain of salt. Look, is that a big ass flash? Look at that dude with the red shirt. Over here, right, left. Red shirt, red shirt. Red shirt. He's wearing a flash shirt. Is he? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. I'm like, Flash went to the gym. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's the new big. Flash. <laughs> Added beard. <laughs> He's all grown up now. Barry Allen is, is or Wally, I don't know. That's Barry Allen. You know. <laughs> He's big now. Yeah, Wally West, Barry Allen. He Barry doesn't need West. Batman. Barry West. Wally Allen. Fastest man alive. Wow. Um, but yeah, yeah. Everybody's going to go see Star Wars. Everybody's going to see it because oh, of course. It's, it's Star Wars. I mean, it's like saying you don't have coffee in the morning, but you do have something else like tea oh, right. or a frappe. Exactly. So everybody's going to see it. Oh, for sure. Regardless. I mean, I'm going to see it like maybe like 10 times. I don't Unless know. it's we'll really see. bad. Even if it is bad. Okay. <laughs> Just spill the lightsaber fights. Right? <laughs> Dude, I have hope. Yeah. I have hope. I think... I'm, I'm pretty sure I've gone on record as saying it. Um, I don't think Disney's going to spend $4 billion to and ruin have their it. first horse out the gate ruined. I think we're going to have – the trilogy is going to be amazing. I think some of the spinoffs are going to fail. Rogue One, hands down, will be better than Episode Seven. Why? Yeah? Because it's set in the time where the whole Rebel Alliance thing. I know. It's talking about how they got the Death Star plan. Awesome. I That's think gonna Rogue awesome. One's going to be amazing. I am not excited for a Han Solo spinoff. I really hope they, 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 they have second thoughts about it Same. and they add more stuff to it. I love Han Solo. I don't want to see somebody who's not Harrison Ford as Han exactly. Solo. Exactly. You know? 
Um, I don't know if you remember um, Shadows of the Empire. Oh, yes. The Dash Rendar character. Oh, yes. He should just stick with that. Right? Or Kyle Katarn. Yes. Dude. Dude, but there's so much room. Disney's trying to play it safe by not having unknown people right. for those big name spinoffs. Rogue One, you can put anybody, but they put big name actors. They did. So I, I am, I, my dream spinoff mm-hmm. would be uh, an Obi Wan Kenobi movie between Episode three and four. With with you, McGregor, yes. for sure. Dude, Ewan nobody McGregor. can touch him. And he's actually said yes, he'll do it in interviews. Of course, he'll do it. The guy now is getting to the age. Where he will be an awesome older Ben Kenobi. Right? Have you seen him recently in press? Yes. He's like Patrick Stewart. Physically, he doesn't age. He looks exactly the same. He's awesome. Put a beard on him. He's Obi-Wan. I think once you play a a Jedi in the movie, you have that immortality. Right. (laughs) Or anything in the TV, movies, or anything. You're immortalized. For sure. Forever. (laughs) Like Keanu. Keanu's a vampire, man. Right? Yeah. I saw Bill and Ted the other day. I was like, is that that John Wick? Yeah. He looks the same. Exactly the same. (laughs) Minus the beard. Right? Patrick Stewart, doesn't yes. age. He bathes in the blood of innocence. There's, you can't. A, he probably got a wrinkle from like 20 years ago, and it just another wrinkle popped up now. It's like he's not. He's not gonna age. Yeah. Then all he does is lift his eyebrows, and it's gone. It's gone. It's <laughs> like, where, where are you, Patrick? Patrick, I thought you were like 60 year old Patrick. Now you're like 25 year old. Right. What's going on here? He was on. Um, he was on the Nerdist podcast, which is one I listen to all the time. Oh, awesome. I actually labeled my podcast after his, like the format, because um, he's such a big fan. But he had Patrick Stewart on. And they talked about how he's able to, like, not age, essentially. Yeah. He's like, I don't really know the answer to that, but I do know I went bald at 19. <laughs> I feel his pain. So he said, <laughs> he said by, by choosing to go bald, he just didn't age. He was like, boop, this is it. And it just stayed. Because of the grayness. There's yeah. no gray. <laughs> exactly. Gray gives you age. And if there's no gray, you have no age. Right. So I'm right. going to shave eventually. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Take this gray off my beard. Dude, I'm a beard enthusiast. I have yes. to cut mine soon. Mine's, like, super orange. It looks great though. Thanks, man. It looks great. It's it goes well, well with the outfit. Yeah, yeah. He's I a mature. So. He's, he's a mature Star Wars yeah, uh, exactly. commander. He's a crewman. They he's don't shave. Crewman. He's like, he's like he's a roughneck. Yeah, right. He, he deserves the beard. You, you pansies get back into the desk and work on paper paperwork. I hate shaving. Yeah. Shaving oh. is like the worst thing. Ladies love the beard, but ladies love the smooth skin. Right. They can't make up their minds. So keep it in between. Trim right? it. Yeah. <laughs> so rough yet so soft. Right. So soft. Exactly. Yeah. A beard, but not the full beard. Oh, well, um, we have um, a stormtrooper and a clone trooper. Oh. oh and oh. we have Mia Wallace. Oh, they look so That's cool. That's awesome. They look so cool. I can just hear the Pulp Fiction theme playing in my head. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what but does yeah. the emperor look like? What? What does he look like? <laughs> does he look like a bitch? <laughs> yes, he does, actually. When he's screaming down the freaking, uh, right? what is it? The... That little long tube thing into the reactor core. Whatever. Yeah, he does. Like, ah. We got thrown into the Death Star. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Somebody recognize it. Oh, wait, where's the button at? Oh. Johnny has a uh, Captain <laughs> Rex helmet that usually talks. Yeah, but it doesn't kid saw it. He was like, Captain <laughs> Rex. I was like, hey, yeah, let me get him talking. Right. I think that's what they were looking at. They were looking at the fact that we were we were Star Wars, and they're like, they're Star Wars too. There's a code. Yes. There's a code among Star Wars fans. They were like, yes, we're gonna nod in acceptance. Right. You guys are cool. Did you do anything for Force Friday? Um, worked. Nice. <laughs> but before that, I actually just went by a Target like after the whole madness. Right. I couldn't find a damn thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> it dude. was gone. Target was like the place to be for Force Friday. It had all the stuff. I was at um, Toys R Us at midnight. Oh, no. They had a very small half of an aisle, and that was it. That was it? Yeah, that was it. No Target displays, had like an, no nothing. Uh, had an aisle, a display, a center display, a corner display, a right? register. A BB-8 that says don't touch? Yeah, I touched it. Oh, dude, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but the only thing I could find were stickers, and I was like, ah, something. Right. I bought something on Force Friday, stickers. Right. <laughs> and I put them all over work, and I realized, shit, I wanted them on my house. Right. Not, not at work. <laughs> Uh, and those were the last stickers. But, but as always, they always have cool Star Wars stuff. Yes. Regardless of if it's small or huge or expensive or cheap, they always have something cool that you'll be like, I got stickers. Just put them all right. over, you know? Dude. But, yeah. I'm for it, man. Well, I think that brings us almost at an hour. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So that went by really fast. That's pretty cool, talking about stuff. Right? For an hour. That's that's awesome. I like it. I, I I like I said I, I labeled it after the Nerdist podcast with Chris Hardwick because he has like he's awesome he's yeah I'm huge huge fan 
um, he has a bunch of celebrities on, and yeah. he has like over the years he gets huge names now, and they literally just do this. They just talk, so you get to see this other side of the celebrity. Yeah. So he's had um, Tom Hanks on twice, Jeff Bridges three times, Shit. Tom Cruise. So you hear like Tom Cruise. The Nerdist podcast with Tom Cruise is actually one of my favorite episodes out of 700 something because we see him as this like crazy dude that jumps on couches in Oprah, Scientologist guy. Has millions of memes. Yeah, right? But he's such a cool dude. No, nah, like, he's Just he's to cool. hear him to be like, I like watching movies. People just hate him because he was married to Nicole Kidman at one point. Right? And she's a hot ass woman. And then Tom Hanks is another one of my favorites. That guy's All he talks cool. about is he's like, on my downtime, I watch Storage Wars. He's like, I love that show. I was like, Tom Hanks watches Storage Wars? He's a regular dude that likes regular fun right? things. I mean, what, what do you so expect? so cool. So I do that. I mean, that's the idea for cosplayers. Yeah. Because I like idolize a lot of them. I'm like, oh, it's so great. So I want to get to know them as You people, and I both. You know? <laughs> and... um. You know, it's called The Interesting Podcast because I talk to anybody whom I find interesting. I had oh, an author on last honor. week. This guy, yeah, right? Dude, she's super interesting. Uh, oh, announcement. Boondock Saints panel. It's not the Boondock Saints panel if you don't have uh, it's Norman Reedus. Yeah. It's two-thirds of the Boondock Saints panel. I mean, don't get me wrong. De La Roca and, and, and Sean are awesome people, but... Norman it, Reedus, man. Yeah, he's the main one that you want there. He was like the biggest name here, right? Yeah. Well, him and uh, John Barman, but John oh, Barman yeah. had to go back to go film uh, Arrow, so. Of course, and then he obviously Walking Dead. Yes. Sweet, that's good. But hey, as long as they go back to doing what they love and they're bringing us the stuff we want to see, I'm fine with that's, that. That's that's what I'm saying. That's There's why, other cons. Like I've read all the Game of Thrones books. Oh God. And the most recent one, you know, it's taking five, six years, right? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. dude, take ten. As long as that book is great. Exactly. Don't force and it. That's one show I can't talk about because. It hurts me every time I think oh, about the deaths dude. and all the bad things that happen. I'm like, dude, it, that's like like uh, this movie <laughs> with uh, Michael Keaton. I mean, Michael Keaton, Michael Douglas uh, falling down. Yeah, it's one of these movies that when you take psychology, they, they show you that movie to show you the the when the shit hits the fan moment on your day happens. It just ruins the rest of your day. Oh, and this guy man. goes through hell back and forth. That's a movie you have to check out. Yeah, falling down, old movie but awesome movie. Sweet. That's basically what happens in. Game of Thrones. The moment, the moment one person dies in Game of Thrones is like a downfall. Oh, dude, linchpin. Yeah, man. All the rest of it. That's why when April comes around, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have my tissues on one side and the beer on the other because I need to balance the crying and right. the, I gotta act macho. <laughs> For real. But no, no. This is this is. I'm gonna tell you right now. This this podcast. This is the first time I've ever done this. this is awesome. Oh, yeah? yeah, awesome. I love it. I love it. The setup, the equipment. If if anybody can see this, the equipment is amazing. It is pretty. It's cool. like a cell phone. Put it in this way. It's like a cell phone. Like it doesn't even take that much space. Right. But the microphones. The microphones do take space. But yeah, exactly. It's awesome. It's super portable. This guy is a. He, he, he freaked me out. It was like a, <laughs> like a professional. He pops out with this thing here, and boom. I'm like. Uh, I try to oh, be wow. efficient as possible. <laughs> and you're doing it well. And modeling after Chris Hardwick, that right. guy, that guy, I used to watch him on Attack of the Show. Oh, nice. And the web soup. And that guy was very, very animated, and he's awesome. And then now that he has the Nerdist, just like a Chobot. Right. Oh, dude. I watch the, I yeah. watch the, the YouTube News. channel for that. Right. I'm like, yo. He's creating his own G4 again. I love that. Even he said he's not trying to, but it, it is, is basically a, <laughs> a spiritual successor. For sure. And it's sure. awesome. I'm glad that he actually still has the the heart to continue something that got prematurely killed for off sure. for no reason and he's he's an inspiration because he does what he likes exactly he's like i just make stuff that i want to make i was like that's what i'm talking about exactly so and that's awesome I have a podcast now <laughs> and you're a guest <laughs> and i'm honored to be your your guest for uh wizard world which was probably gonna end up being one of many because right? there's sure. many people here for sure interesting and amazing people too of course but yeah man thanks for coming on yeah, i no appreciate problem. it um where can people find you um, you can find me on Facebook. Either if you want to add me on your on your personal page, it's uh, Johnny Volatile, or if not, you want to just follow my page, it's Volatile Cosplay. Cool. And Instagram, um, I use another name because it already says Volatile Cosplay slash Fox Die Gaming, which would be Mister underscore G underscore eighty one. Nice. On Instagram, on Twitch, uh, it's uh, Fox Die Gaming. Also, YouTube is Fox Die Gaming. And Twitter is Fox Die Gaming. So Sweet. I had like a split personality type Perfect. of thing. I Gaming and cosplay. Sweet. I like it. But thank you, Brian, for having me here. It's, it's an honor to be on a podcast that basically is going to shape up to be amazing and to do and go on and do amazing things. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank and you for having me. And that's it. <laughs>